So this is the uh, robotics uh, capstone course, and uh, we're actually using a humanoid uh, robot and also the Connect three-dimensional uh, camera as a way to teach the robot new skills directly by observing a human teacher. So it's a way of uh, implementing machine learning and algorithms from artificial intelligence and speech recognition, really implementing them and getting hands-on experience by using them in the context of a real physical uh, robot. We want to have uh, objects that the now has never seen before in front of the now, uh, and then we want to use the Kinect to detect these unknown objects and then basically have this sort of interactive um, now learning about what objects are in its world. What is this object called? It is called ball. Did you say ball? Confirm yes. Okay. Does a ball have any properties I should know about? Confirm yes. What is one of its properties? It has the property round. Did you say round? Confirm yes. Okay. I've saved this property. Another one of the challenges, and this definitely, I don't think this works perfectly yet, um, is detecting the difference between an object that you have seen before and an object you haven't seen before. So basically, how do we know that it's a different soccer ball versus the same soccer ball in a different rotation or something like that? And so that's a really tricky problem. Capstones, you get to bring in a lot of different skill sets and then actually apply it to real problems. Um, and you get to work on one project over the course of a whole quarter so you can achieve and solve from difficult problems, um, which I think is pretty much what you're going to be doing after you graduate. You know, you're going to go into industry you're going to be working at some big firms or even maybe research, and that's what your goal is, right? To solve these big problems that, that matter to us as humans. We chose balancing because it seemed like a really interesting and difficult task. So basically our goal is to uh, get the now to imitate a human's motions while maintaining balance. To do that, we're using the Kinect to read in the 3D, three-dimensional positions of all the human's joints. I'm able to see over there, Mike's moving around, and uh, Basically what we've got the now doing is uh, reading in those 3D joints at the same time maintain balance, which is a difficult problem because the, uh, the dynamics and the, the distribution of weights of all the now's body parts are different from the human. So if the now directly mimics the human, it's going to fall over. So there has, to, there has to be a little bit of transformation. Robots are pretty cool. It's a pretty interesting class. I mean, we get to play with this $10,000 little bipedal robot that's like two feet tall. For our project, we have um, two learning procedures that we were interested in. The first is based on improving the natural language interaction that we have with our robot. So we were interested in being able to speak to the robot naturally and having it understand a little bit about what we were talking about. Now walk backward. Please clarify distance. Two meters. Yes, one of the major advantages of this system is we can say in, we have a larger scope of uh, the way you can tell the now how to walk. You don't have to Motor always box. say, uh, now walk, or you know, in that specific way, you say, I want you to walk two meters forward. So basically there was a missing parameter in your command and it asked for that. Yeah, 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 this is basically the first yeah. half of our system. The second half is connecting. Um, what we've said and you know the logic extracted from natural language to actual sensor streams. Yeah. yeah, and then combining with the logic built on the just word level mm -hmm. to like somewhat like program the robot. Yeah. Then then it's actually logic mm -hmm. and sensor stream to actually yeah, do sure. some task. For the natural language side to, to interact with it verbally, we have trained um, a naive Bayes classifier. So that given an input sentence, it understands which of its um, like learned environment um, sort of attributes we're talking about, and then it'll respond to us by telling us about what we're querying, what we're asking about. One of the problems with that is if we want to be able to interact with our robot um, with sentences that it's not seen before, then we had to have a large uh, set of example sentences, and then we use that to train our, our classifier. So then the second learning task, learning about its environment, we used what's called a support vector machine. We've used actually a number of them. And we used our natural language to specify positive and negative examples of different attributes that we're interested in. You are far away from an object. You asked me about the category distance. I am far. And with that, we would feed in our entire sensor stream into a support vector machine, which would then, in the future, classify other examples of close or far. I think it gives uh, the students some experience that they might not have 
uh, uh, had in other courses, and it gives them a way to uh, test their knowledge of computer science in the context of a, a humanoid robot.